So, hi and welcome to cloudwords.net uh, for a video interview and this time uh, I have a very special guest and I'm really, really excited about this. Um, and he is Panayotis and uh, he's the founder and CEO of Big Stash. And today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what Big Stash is, why it is so special. But before we really dive deeper into this cloud storage uh, service, I really would like to know you a little better, Panayoti. So why don't you talk a little about yourself, your history, your background, and then we're going to talk about Big Stash. Uh, hi, Mauricio. Nice to meet you. Um, well, my background, I'm a software developer. I, I mean, I used to be a software developer. Uh, I started uh, getting into open source and Linux in the late 90s, mid 90s. Uh, uh, I, I then turned into social media consulting. It wasn't called social media back then in the early 2000s uh, because I, I had my own blog and podcast and just mm -hmm. having a, the minimum expertise in those fields would make you an expert. <laughs> oh back yeah, then. That, is, that is excellent. So what was your podcast called? Is it still online? Well, Vripan, Vripan Radio uh, no, it's not online. I mean, you could find the old archives, mm -hmm. but uh, anyway, it's in Greek, so oh, okay, it probably <laughs> wouldn't be. That's <laughs> interesting. Well, maybe we have Greek listeners, uh, so <laughs> hope so. And um, yes, well, I worked for uh, a big uh, advertising agency, uh, Ogilvy in Greece. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and the, this was my thing for the last uh, decade, more or less. So you developed software uh, for Ogilvy, or what exactly did you do there? Yes, yes. Uh, in the beginning, it was uh, software development. Then I started doing more consulting, social media consulting, and Web 2.0 was called back then, in the beginning, then social media. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, well, eventually, a couple of years ago, I decided to start my own business, uh, and I founded uh, Long Access. Mm -hmm. uh, Long Access uh, started as a service that would let parents, because in the meantime, I became a parent. I have a four-year-old <laughs> daughter now, and I wanted to find a way to preserve all these videos and photos Mm -hmm. uh, we had of her in a way that she would find them um, uh, even after 20 or 30 years when she would be old enough mm -hmm. to care about these things. So what year are we seeing? Was uh, it 2008, 2009-ish or? No, no, that was uh, 2012. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, that's why I founded uh, Long Access. Uh, but we realized that uh, even though it was an interesting service to a lot of consumers, uh, we had some problems uh, with the adoption rate because uh, people, the long access offers 30 years prepaid storage. So a lot of our consumers would buy the storage and they would say, okay, now I have paid for 30 years. Mm -hmm. When I find a good time, I will organize my stuff and upload it there. And obviously, there's never a good time for anyone to <laughs> sit down and organize this stuff. Exactly, yeah. And so uh, we decided to use the, exper the expertise we had developed and the software we had developed so far to create a, a lighter service, mm -hmm. which we called a Big Freeze. So which, uh, uh, just just hold on for a second, um, uh, for so for long access, how was your structure, how, how was the software structured and which services did you use as a server infrastructure to store people's data? Well, we use uh, Amazon AWS services mm -hmm. and the main storage is uh, AWS Glacier. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So um, I believe Dropbox also uses AWS, but it, they are not reliant on Glacier, but um, on the on S three on S three exactly. So you have yeah. you, you have always used Glacier, or, or you you started using Glacier when it when it became available, right? Yes, that's right. Okay, so uh, was because it, was, yeah. Go yeah, on. because our use case is uh, data that uh, people will upload now and will need some time in the long future. So waiting for a couple of hours mm -hmm. to for the data to become available is not such a big problem and actually cost is a much bigger issue. So mm -hmm. Glacier looked like a good fit. So I want to rewind just uh, just a little bit. Uh, so you, when you started uh, Long Access, did you did you bootstrap it, or did you have any any capital on hand? So how did you how did you start how did you start this company? We're, we were lucky to to get funded to get some seed funding uh, by a Greek uh, venture capital called uh, the Open Fund. Mm -hmm. And we raised, uh, once we had the team in place and uh, the business plan and a minimum prototype, uh, we received uh, about uh, 100,000 euros. Uh, so, yeah, we had seed funding back then. And, uh, well, actually today we're an announcing our second funding round, which is uh, 300,000 euros. Wow, that's excellent. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. So, and then you transitioned from long access. You said, okay, now um, you wanted to rebrand re your service into, into Big Stash, basically. So maybe you could talk a little bit about why, why exactly did you trans transition to a new name, to a new brand? What led you to actually find that this was a better strategy to follow? Well, okay, I know this is a bit confusing and it's not good for a startup to have multiple services and we should be focused in only one of them. But a long access is still out there and it's working and we think that in the long run it will be a uh, very, very interesting and valuable service. But uh, yeah, so we transitioned to a lighter service with, which we initially called Deep Freeze. Uh, because we used cold storage. Uh, but after some time, we launched the uh, deep freeze in, uh, I think, June this year, a few months ago. Uh, but we realized that cold storage was not our, the, the most uh, interesting point for our users. We realized that uh, when we asked our users why they liked uh, what we then called deep freeze, for example, they would say that we like it because it's not easy to delete uh, things because uh, it's a place where we can put things mm -hmm. and not worry that we will delete them uh, because we synced something with another computer or because we opened a Word document or an Excel document and didn't realize that we saved the changes on top of the old one, things like that. Mm -hmm. So. Actually, the cold storage part was not the most important thing. Uh, the archiving part was uh, the most important thing for them. And we decided to move from something that referred to cold storage to something that refers more to the the act of archiving and getting your stuff in a safe place. So you would think that it is, or that it was mainly like a phrasing problem that people could not really identify with the name or with the phrase cold storage and instead uh, wanted to use like more of the archiving aspect or was that the main reason? Yes, and uh, because we, when we called the service deep freeze, we would go into uh, a lot of parallels like uh, freezing your data and defrosting your data and it works up to a certain point but once you try to take it <laughs> further it doesn't always work I mean okay it's a good parallel but it can not get you so far Okay, so, so then, then let's uh, let's talk about uh, your new or your your new name, your new product, your Big Stash. Uh, what is it actually? Uh, what is your what is your main selling proposition? So why would I sign up for Big Stash, and why would I not go directly to Amazon Glacier and and put my data data there? 
Okay. Uh, compared, we have we actually have two kind of competitors. Uh, one of them is uh, Amazon Glacier itself. Uh, but the way Amazon Glacier is built and structured, uh, it's built to be used by developers, not consumers. I mean, even the the way that you have to create your own uh, access keys and use special tools to upload uh, uh, files and uh, use uh, what they call vaults and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they have a pricing scheme which is very complicated. I don't think that anyone can actually estimate the exact <laughs> cost of retrieving the data. Yeah. Uh, which is good. I mean, they charge for what they actually offer. Uh, but it's not, uh, it's not good for a consumer that wants to know that, okay, I've paid now and I can upload and download my data whenever I want. Uh, so we decided to build an abstraction layer on top of this and uh, offer consumers a more user-friendly access to services like uh, Amazon Glacier. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, we have competition from the typical uh, store, cloud storage providers like Dropbox and Google Drive, mm -hmm. uh, but most of them are built around the syncing model, which mm -hmm. means that uh, you actually have to have all the data that you upload to your on your computer too. Exactly. Uh, of course, they, they do have options for selective syncing and things like that, but these feel more like hacks and not like the, the core product. Mm -hmm. Exactly, uh, I understand, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you would actually recommend... I mean, if, you, if you're like me... Yeah, go if on. You, if you're like me and you have a, a, laptop, a laptop with a 250 gigabytes a hard drive, mm -hmm. uh, you probably won't be able to keep all your photos or uh, the the video you're shooting right now after you edit it, <laughs> the raw footage, things like that. Yeah, it's always a problem, especially with video files. I mean, they're 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 getting enormously enormously large. So maybe you could uh, outline a typical use case scenario for your service. So who would benefit most from this type of cold storage from Big Stash? Yeah, I think that creatives, like people that do audio and video processing, are the people that would be very interested in our service. Or uh, GoPro users. All these users are people who create a lot of uh, video and audio and very large files. They process it. Uh, they get something which is the finished product and then they, are, they have to decide what to do with the original raw material, which is big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, of course they can keep it on a local drive, but we've seen cases, I mean, we've seen a case of a video, a small video produ production company in the States. They told us we have like 20 drives <laughs> yeah, that's drawer. incredible. And we don't know what to do with them. I mean, okay, we've put our stuff in there, but uh, it's hard to manage it, it's hard to back it up, it's hard to make sure it's the drives are still working. And I think that anyone who's uh, shooting raw video, or recording lossless audio files, things like that, uh, would really like to have a place where they can put the original material and if they need it, they probably won't for a number of years or months. But if they need it, they can download it. So how do you address the problem of transferring files uh, to the cloud? I mean, it would take an enormous, uh, enormous time to actually get like two, three, five, six, eight, ten terabytes of files uh, onto, onto your service or onto other servers. How do you deal with that? Is there any solution, any workaround you've worked on or you're currently working on? Well, we... We know, we, we think that we're uh, something like the USB, the external drive, <clears throat> but for the cloud. And uh, in order to make this work, it has to work like an external drive that it has to be able to plug into different devices. Well, in the cloud, we don't have different devices. We have multiple services like Dropbox and Google Drive and OneDrive. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, we initially launched with the Dropbox support, which means 
that you can easily transfer files from Dropbox and to Dropbox, mm -hmm. which we think it would be a good fit for people that have Dropbox integrated in their everyday workflow. Like if you upload your uh, the raw footage of an interview to Dropbox for someone else to edit, mm -hmm. uh, then you've done this step of uploading your files in the cloud. Mm -hmm. And then it would be easy to copy these files from Dropbox to Big Stars. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is not very likely we, that, that somebody who is archiving terabytes of data, that, that this person is actually using Dropbox for this kind of purpose. So for example, I would not be archiving my files on Dropbox um, because of security reasons and because it is basically more for the active usage of, of files. So I was referring to directly transferring files to your service and actually how, how long that would take and if you have any workarounds such as um, that I can send you my hard drives and you're going to do the transfer a little bit faster or uh, any, any other um, prioritization mm. or speeding up the upload because this is going to mm. be very tedious I guess. Yes, it is. Uh, no, we don't currently offer a, a service where you could send us a, a drive or something like this and we'll take care of uploading the data. Uh, it is something we've considered. I don't think we're ready to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that in the long run this is a solution. I mean, that I think that in the long run people will have better upload speeds yeah, and uh, we are doing our best to improve our desktop clients so that they're more efficient and faster. But yeah. of course, there's a limit. To, to yeah, that. obviously. But I mean, it's always a little frustrating because currently um, I'm using uh, both Backblaze and CrashPlan. I'm sure you're aware of of those backup solutions yes. and. Uh, I have uh, roughly, I don't know, on my personal computer I have around two terabytes and on my company computers, I mean, we have terabytes of terabytes of data and I see, wow, it's going to take 200 days to upload my two terabytes of files. So, of course, if somebody would like to archive 16 terabytes of video files, that is going to be uh, very, very, very time consuming. But I get, to, I get the idea that um, by, by when time progresses, internet connection speeds are going to be faster, but um, this could be obviously a problem for your business business model, I guess. Well, it's a problem for any cloud storage yeah, service, sure. <laughs> but uh, I, think, I think that the integration with other services that people use in their workflow, uh, as I mentioned before, if you are, for example, a photographer that's using uh, Dropbox or Google Drive to share the original photos with a client uh, before they decide which ones are to be used for the final product, uh, then you've gone through this step of uploading your data to the cloud. Mm. So uh, offering a way to transfer data to and from these services to big stars, I think will be a good solution for, uh, for many, in many use cases. Mm -hmm. And how do you deal with uh, with the actual security? Do you currently uh, encrypt files before they are sent to the cloud, or do you plan on implementing mm -hmm. encryption? Well, this is an interesting part. I mean, when we launched uh, the original service I told you about, Long Access, we went into great lengths to build uh, very strong security and uh, client-side encryption with random keys that we even didn't have access to mm -hmm. and we found out that uh, this was actually a problem for most of our users mm -hmm. and we had to spend a lot of uh, resources and effort to educate and explain the value of uh, this kind of security. Uh, so Big Stas has no, uh, no encryption and no security features in this way. Um, in that sense, but we are, we've, uh, we're already planning some features and we think that the archiving nature of the service offers the opportunity to uh, address the security issues in new ways. I mean, uh, the, the reason is that when you don't need immediate access, when you don't expect that you will have immediate access to your data, uh, when you don't expect to 
be able to sync data between multiple devices. Uh, there can be other ways to add security that are not intrusive and uh, yeah. that users will like. With yeah, them. for but example, I mean, I, I, can't I, could, say I, could, uh, I could, for example, uh, imagine like a law firm, for example, that have uh, terabytes of contracts and, and important files um, of their clients and that, that, that are worth of high, high protection. So maybe, well, a solution would obviously be if you do not do the encryption part, then pr prior to uploading the files that they take care of the encryption process if they want to do so. Um, but it's very interesting that you commented that most users actually seem to not care or seem to not actually pay a lot of attention on the security aspect, preferring uh, that they install just a software which transfers the files directly without a hassle of selecting a personal passphrase that they might forget and then they would never be able to access their data again. So this is an interesting, uh, an interesting aspect. So do you think that the overall development goes more towards less encryption or towards no. like more encryption what is what is your take on that no i I'm, i don't think it's the user's uh, problem it's our problem the developer's problem <laughs> uh, we have to provide security and encryption in ways that is uh, easy for the average user to understand and use and not be a problem in their everyday workflow. Uh, and I think that we will see more and more encryption in more products. And uh, as I said before, we, we intend to add an, a security layer that uh, will integrate encryption mm -hmm. uh, in big stuff. So um, tell me a little about the, the pricing. So how, how do you currently price your um, the, cl the cloud storage solution for, for users and businesses? Well. Uh, our pricing starts uh, from uh, $15 per year for 100 gigabytes and uh, ends up to $500 for 5 terabytes. Mm -hmm. Per year. Uh, it's priced annually, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we are currently offering 5 terabytes for free for, uh, for one year. Mm -hmm. And the reason is that uh, we would like users to use the service and not feel uh, limited to what they can do mm -hmm. uh, for at least a year and then they can pay for the plan that better fits their needs. Yeah, that's uh, that's actually great. So, I mean, it's like the, fr the freemium model, so you try to convince people of your, of your service. Do you think that uh, one year uh, is enough because you because maybe if you're reliant on the cold storage principle and archiving principle, people will not even need uh, to access their files within a year. So um, do you actually think that that's going to be a problem? No, no, I don't think so. I think that uh, proving the, the value of our service is when they when they actually upload their data. I mean, if you realize that, if you think that our service is a good fit for your two terabyte storage problem mm -hmm. and you upload <laughs> your data to Big Stars, uh, I think that after a year you will probably pay for this, uh, for our service. And I mean, our pricing is not, it's not a, it's something that we try to to, to tell our users that, mm -hmm. you know, this is just for one year and when you, after this year, you will have to pick one of the plans. Mm -hmm. Well, the pricing is low compared to other services. Sure. So well, now is. lately we are we are seeing like a huge development into unlimited cloud storage. So, I mean, almost every two weeks there is an, popping out a new service that offers unlimited cloud storage. Uh, have you thought about incorporating like an unlimited plan or is this not viable yet? Well, I'm always skeptical when it comes to unlimited <laughs> because <laughs> <Me> too, <yeah. laughs> uh, storage actually costs something. And uh, usually when people say it's unlimited, they mean that you're limited by something else. Like you can only upload files from a single computer or you can uh, uh, upload with uh, a speed that wouldn't even allow you to upload more than 
a couple terabytes or something mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. this. So I think that it's fair for users to, to get a fair price and know that they will be charged for what they are actually using. So you're not going to incorporate uh, like an unlimited plan in future? No, no, that, it's not in our plans. Okay, so if you, um, now it's time for your ultimate uh, sales pitch in 30 seconds. So if you wanted to convince me why would I choose Big Stash instead of other services such as Crash Plan that allows also unlimited, uh, or that allows unlimited uh, backup of files, um, what, what would be the key differentiator? Why should I choose your service as a consumer and why should I choose your service as a business? Okay. Uh... First of all, our 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 service uh, is targeted to, to consumers, and not mm -hmm. so much uh, to businesses. And then, uh, backup and syncing services will require storage on your own, a uh, local storage too. I mean, the the amount of data you upload to Crossplan or uh, Dropbox or Google Drive will also reside on your local storage too. And uh, we consider Big Stars something like the attic, a virtual attic for you, for the things that you don't want to hang ar to have around because they take up valuable space, but you wouldn't like to throw away. Mm -hmm. Something that uh, you can put them to Big Stars and keep them there. They won't mess with your everyday workflow but it will be there when you need it. Okay, so and just as some closing words, uh, what, is the, what is your take on the overall development of cloud storage and the cloud storage or the cloud industry in general? Where do you think we are heading in the next one year, two years, five years? Well, uh, there's this notion that prices are dropping to zero which is not actually true. I mean, if you see the cost of raw cloud storage, it hasn't dropped that much. It is dropping, but it's not zero. Uh, if you go to buy raw storage from Amazon or Google or Microsoft Azure, you will see that it costs, uh, and it's not going to zero. Uh, we do see many services that are trying to uh, actually charge for extra features and uh, integrate the cost of actual storage in that, like collaboration features or uh, uh, synchronization or things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that uh, people will need more and more storage, raw storage, to archive things. And uh, I think that there's a big market there that no one is actually <laughs> to, uh, trying to to reach. Okay, Panayotis, thank you very much for the interview and I wish you all the best success for, for Big Stash. We will here at CloudWords, we will certainly monitor your service uh, closely and hope that you're going to be big in the next couple of months or, or, or years. So um, yeah, thank you very much for the interview and uh, have a great thank week and we'll be in touch. Thank you very much, Maurice, and I hope uh, your uh, listeners and viewers will understand uh, that English is not my first language. So, no worries. I'm, uh, I'm sure English is also not my my first language. So, <laughs> no worries. I'm sure they understand. Good. <laughs> Good. Thank you.